the kingdom you have to be born again if you want to enter the kingdom you have to be born again born again be Nicodemus, yeah, he visited Jesus. He wanted to ask a question that was really serious. He said, Teacher, we know you're a man that sent from God. I know me visiting you right now might be odd. Before he could ask his question, yeah, Jesus said, You must be born again in the very end, or you will never see the kingdom of God. To Nicodemus, this would have sounded very odd. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you for tuning in to the Teach Me to Obey radio broadcast. I am your host, Anita Punchi Lewis. I'm jumping right into today's teaching on the kingdom. No procrastination, nothing. Right into the teaching. Last week, I started a new subtopic on Jesus preached and demonstrated the kingdom. Remember, we're on the scriptures on the kingdom of God. So last week, I started... Jesus preached and demonstrated the kingdom. The scripture for today is taken from Mark 1 verse 14 and it reads, Now, after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Now, after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. The gospel of the what? Preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. The gospel of the kingdom of God. Now here's a question. When we were born again, when we were converted from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light, when we were spiritually born again, did we receive a gospel other than the one that King Jesus preached? King Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom of God. Read it for yourself, Mark 1 verse 14, and throughout the Gospels you see it. That is the Gospel that he preached. That is the message that he preached. That was his priority. That was his main focus. That was Jesus' preoccupation. Jesus traveled about on foot. He traveled by boat. He traveled in crowds. Sometimes he even went alone. He went to houses. He went to villages. He went to cities. He walked by the seaside, all with the urgent intent of what? spreading the gospel of the kingdom of God to as many people as he could while he was here on the earth. Now, as we would say in Montserrat, right? <laughs> he told two kinds of people, those who wanted to hear and those who did not want to hear. Jesus spoke this kingdom message to those with childlike hearts who welcomed it and to those who despised it and rejected it. He preached it. He went about and he preached it. That is what he was about. Jesus had all night prayer meeting. I remember when I read this in the scriptures, I'm like, wow, Jesus was out all night praying. What do you think he was praying about? This message, the good news of the kingdom. As you can see, Jesus took this message seriously. Now, why haven't we been hearing? Why haven't we been preaching? And why haven't we been teaching on the very same message that King Jesus preached and taught while he was here on the earth? Why not? If we say that we are his followers, we are following in his footsteps, we are doing as he did. Why is it that we are not preaching the same message? And I can ask this question. I can say that because I know that I have not heard this message being preached in many, you know, in many assemblies, in many sermons that I have been privy to. Hmm. If Jesus, if Jesus is our ultimate example and our model in ministry, why is it that our ministries don't look like his? Why is it that our ministries look different to his? Something is wrong. Like me, many of you were in a place of religiosity when we first started our Christian journey. We prayed, we fasted, we read our Bibles, we did many things, but it was only being religious. Honestly, we were spiritually blind 
And ultimately, we were bound by religion. Matthew 6.33. Now, this is a scripture all of you should be able to recite by now. Because I have said this so many times on this broadcast over the past two years that I've been here. In Matthew 6, 33, we are commanded to do what? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, his right way of doing things, his right way of living. However, from the beginning of our journey with Jehovah God, did we really do that? Did we really seek the kingdom first? Let me speak for myself. I did not seek the kingdom first because I did not know anything about that. Okay, I just literally followed along the program what was happening. I just went along with it. I did not do any seeking, no kingdom first. I did not do that. Some of you may be asking, how do I get entry? How do I get access into this kingdom, hmm? this mysterious kingdom? It's a spiritual kingdom. Eh? It is a spiritual kingdom. I would have shared with you the happening between Jesus and Nicodemus. Remember Nicodemus, the one who came to Jesus by night. This is found in John chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. I shared it with you before, but guess what? I'm going to share it with you again. Nicodemus was one of the Pharisees, a man with some clout among his people. He came to Jesus under the cloak of darkness to question him. This is a narrative, right? Now, this is now a dialogue. So, you know, you're going to hear me saying Nicodemus. You're going to hear me saying Jesus. Nicodemus, teacher, some of us have been talking. You are obviously a teacher who has come from God. The signs you are doing are proof that God is with you. Jesus, I tell you the truth. Only someone who experiences birth for a second time can hope to see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus says, I am a grown man. How can someone be born again when he is old like me? Am I to crawl back into my mother's womb for a second birth? That's impossible. Jesus said, I tell you the truth. If someone does not experience water and spirit birth, there is no chance he will make it into God's kingdom. Like from like, whatever is born from flesh is flesh. Whatever is born from spirit is spirit. Don't be shocked by my words, but I tell you the truth. Even you, an educated and respected man among your people, must be reborn to enter the kingdom of God. Oh, this is Jesus speaking here. This is King Jesus, who is the way, King Jesus, who is the truth, King Jesus, who is the life. But we see here, well, or hear here, or read here, we read him giving a strange answer here. Why didn't he start by saying, I am the way into the kingdom? Why he didn't say that? Why he didn't say, I am the door to the Father? Why didn't he just say that, you know, come on, this is me, I am, this is how you get in? Hmm? That would have been so simple, right? Why didn't he start by saying, Nicodemus? You are looking at the answer right here in front of you. Hmm? But no, he said that no one will be able to see the kingdom of God unless he is born again, except he is born again. John chapter 3, verse 3. Then Jesus went into details to explain to Nicodemus how this born again experience occurs. It is of the water and the spirit without being born of water and the spirit. No one, no one, regardless of status, color, you know, your financial status, whatever it is, regardless of that, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he's born of the water and the spirit. Jesus even reiterated, he said, marvel not, don't be surprised, don't be shocked that you must be born again. Jesus did not want any misunderstanding to occur. He wanted Nicodemus to get it crystal clear that there was only one entry point, And that is, you must be born again. That is the only way you get into the kingdom. Hmm? Again, this is what Jesus preached. He came on the earth and he preached about the kingdom of God. That was his message. You must be born again. You must be born again to enter into the kingdom. This is the message that Jesus preached. Now, if somebody says three times, hmm? Jesus would have said that to Nicodemus from John chapter 3, verse 3 to 7. Three times he said that to Nicodemus, that you must be born again. Hmm? It must be very important that he actually said that three times. Now, if somebody's saying something to me three times, I'm going to start to get irritated because he's like, well, you think I don't have a brain? I understand what you're saying, but well, you have to say it three times. But Jesus wanted to make sure that Nicodemus did not miss this vital point. Jesus made sure that Nicodemus knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that he needed to be born again. He needed to experience a spiritual rebirth, born of the water and the spirit. He needed that. Listen to this, eh? 
we all need to be born again to enter into the kingdom. All are we? Every person born on the earth, we all need to be born again to enter into the kingdom. We were all born in sin. That's our first nature. Sin. Every one of us, we were all born in sin. There is no human being who was born, you know, in the spirit, who was born a Christian, who was born a believer. Not one of us were born in the spirit when we were naturally born. Mm -mm. The Apostle Paul tells us in Ephesians 2 verse 1. As for you, you were dead in your trespasses and sins. Psalm 51 reads, I was brought into this world in sin. In sin, my mother gave birth to me. Romans 3.23 says, For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standards. Nobody, none of us, were born into the kingdom naturally. No, sin is our first nature. Y'all ever see... I mean, not necessarily see, but are you aware? I don't think there's anybody who has ever sat down and taught a child, a toddler, and say, hey, come, let me teach you how to tell a lie. Hmm? Come, let me teach you how to steal. Come, let me teach you how to be mischievous. Nobody would have taught a child that. We come into the world as babies and we grow into toddlers and tutus. You see the child start with some mischief, doing something wrong. Where did they get that from? It's our nature. It's our sin nature. Then you ask the child, who did this? Shaking the head, mm -mm, not me, not me, not me, not me. And is the child, you know, lying. Who taught the child how to lie? Sin nature, our first nature. We were all born in sin. That is why Jesus had to make sure he reiterated it to Nicodemus. Nicodemus, you must be born again. Yes, you were born into the earth, but you have to experience another birth. You must experience a rebirth, a spiritual rebirth. Hmm? Nobody teaches the child how to sin. Nobody. Jesus came to preach the kingdom of God so that we all can be reborn into this kingdom. He does not. The scripture tells us that God is not willing that any should perish. This is the message that Jesus preached. Hmm? The message of the kingdom of God. I remember some time before when I would have come and, you know, would have spoken about the deceptions. Hmm? The things that deceive us into thinking that we are born again when we are not saying a prayer being involved in church activities, well, saying a sinner's prayer, hmm? taking communion, serving here, doing this here, being, you know, leader of ministries here and there. Oh my, there are so many religious deceptions that can fool us, that have been deceiving us into thinking that we are in the kingdom when we are not. There are many of you who listen to me, who are listening to me, who attend local assemblies, some local assembly, and... You believe that because you participate in the activities that you are in the kingdom. That is not the truth. If that was so, Nicodemus would have been on his way because he was a teacher. My goodness, Nicodemus, he had clout. The scriptures say he had clout. Hmm? He was a teacher, a ruler. Hmm? If that was so, then he did not need to be born again. Jesus would not have told him that if participating in religious activities is a ticket to the kingdom of God. No. The spirit of religion has blinded us. It has deceived so many persons into thinking that they are in the kingdom and on their way to heaven. But they are not. They are not. Satan is simply deceiving them. The scripture tells us that we must know the truth and it is the truth that makes us free. Sometimes things would feel uncomfortable when we hear the truth and because what the saying goes, the truth hurts. Hmm. It's better to acknowledge the truth, accept the truth and change rather than to continue living in a lie and perish it doesn't make sense when jesus christ came and he preached the gospel he wanted other people he wanted people to be free he wanted people to know the truth so that is why he went about preaching the kingdom the gospel of the kingdom of god he went about he made it his business to do that hmm? like nicodemus many people end up practicing a lot of religious activities thinking that they are connected to god the father but that's not so that is not so that is not so but I'm not here to preach doom and gloom because, hey, all is not lost. Jesus has made it absolutely clear that we must be born again. Hmm? We must be born again. He desires us to be born again, to get into the kingdom of God. We have his word, the Bible. It is here. The spirit is the spirit of God that causes this spiritual rebirth. All is not lost. You don't have to end up in hell. You have an opportunity 
you have an opportunity to make it right. You must be born again. Jesus did not want Nicodemus to continue living in deception. And guess what? He does not want us to be deceived either. No, he does not want us to be deceived. He wants us to be set free by the truth. He wants to make us free by literally us receiving the truth. You must be born again. Jesus went about and he preached, oh my goodness, he preached the gospel of the kingdom. Telling people about the kingdom. Hmm? Letting people know. He went about on what he was doing. Healing sick people. Giving sight to the blind. Causing the deaf to hear. All that was part of the kingdom that he was preaching. All that was part of the kingdom that he was preaching. He preached the kingdom, the kingdom of God. That is what he preached. That was his message. In 1 Samuel 21 verse 8, King David, beloved of the Lord, King David said that the king's business requires haste. It is a matter of urgency. It is a matter of urgency that we preach the gospel of the kingdom of God. This is the king's business. This is King Jesus' business. We must preach the gospel of the kingdom of God. That is the right gospel that we are to preach. Any other gospel that we want to preach that Jesus did not preach. Uh, 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 uh. No, we have to get it right. We have to get it right. We must be busy. We must be, oh my goodness, the king's business requires haste. We must be preaching this message, getting the message out to all and sundry. The kingdom, the kingdom of God is what? What is the kingdom of God? I would have explained that to you, the king's domain. Presently, his government established in our earth and vessels, in our lives, as practical as that. Matthew 17, 21 tells us that the kingdom of God is within us, is within us, is inside of us where the king rules. The king has authority. The king has, my goodness, all, you know, all rulership. Whatever he says, that is what goes. His word is what we live by. And I'm not talking about just the word that we read, but his word, his spoken word, his written word is what we live by. The kingdom of God is his government established in our lives. In our lives. We do as he says. King Jesus needs to be enthroned upon our hearts. Hmm? He rules. Not what I want. Not what you want. We see Jesus literally living that out when he was on the earth. When he was going to be crucified. And what did he say? He said, nevertheless, not my will. But you was be done. It's not about what I want. But Father, it's about what you want. It's a nevertheless, not my will. Not my will. But you was be done. That is the kingdom. The kingdom is where the king rules. That is the kingdom. Hmm? As Christians, as believers, people who are born again, we must diligently and readily obey the commands of the Lord. He's no longer physically here on the earth, Jesus. He's in heaven now. But what did he do? He left us the Great Commission. And the Great Commission is not a word for us to say, oh, the Great Commission. The Great Commission tells us to go and preach the same message that Jesus did. That's what he simply put. That's what it is. The Great Commission is us going and preaching the very same message that Jesus did. Unfortunately, many of us have not even done the going. Furthermore, preach the right message. It's time for us to get it right. It's time for us to preach the kingdom of God. That is the right message that we should be carrying if we say that we are Jesus followers, Christians, believers, representatives of Jesus on the earth. How can I represent you if I'm not doing as you did? If I'm not preaching, if I'm not saying the same thing that you did? If you preach a particular message, this is what you came to do. If I am not doing that, I'm not representing you. No, because if I'm representing you, I must look like you. I must sound like you. That is the truth. King Jesus was passionate then about extending his kingdom. He is still passionate here about extending his kingdom on the earth. King Jesus, my goodness, he's interested in souls. He is interested in souls. That is why he came on the earth to preach the gospel message so that what souls could be added to the kingdom so that souls don't have to perish in hell. The scripture tells us, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It is not God's will, it's not Jesus' will that we perish, but that we have everlasting life. We're not supposed to be just <laughs> going to churches. If we say we're Christians, as Christians, as believers, as those who are spiritually born again, we're not supposed to just be comfortable receiving, receiving, hmm? becoming spiritually obese, spiritually overweight, just receiving, receiving, and then we're not giving out. No, no. We're not called to be mere bench warmers sitting on pews and churches on Saturdays and Sundays and hearing the word week after week. 
Bible study and all of that. And then what? Not sharing it? No, 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 no. Jesus went about. He went about preaching. Hmm? We have such better opportunities than Jesus did. You hear Jesus said greater works than what I did. You're going to do. We are going to do as his followers. And guess what? Jesus had to travel by foot when he was on the earth. By foot, by boat. We don't have to do that. We have the world wide web. Hmm? which allows us to travel virtually for us to do what? Go and preach the gospel of the kingdom of God. How many of us really travel about sharing on the kingdom of God? And I mean travel on social media, hmm? face to face when we meet people. Again, we don't have to buy a plane ticket. We don't have to put ourselves in any expense. All of us have access to what? The World Wide Web. We have access to Wi-Fi. What prevents us from sharing about the kingdom of God? Hmm? I have come on this broadcast and have been teaching on the kingdom of God. You have been hearing it. Share it. Share what you have heard. Share it with others. That's your opportunity to go and preach it, to share it. That's what it is, sharing about the gospel. It's as simple as that. Many times we waste time on social media, minding other people's business and all sorts of things and sharing all, on everything thing else. No, share on the things which matter, the things which pertain to life and godliness. Share on the things which would cause a person to have eternal life. We have a responsibility to do that. What excuse do we have for not telling others about the gospel of the kingdom of God? What excuse do we have? It's written in the B-I-B-L-E right there. We read about it, the gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom. We have the internet. You go and you do research the same how to. You can read about it. You have there are endless resources hmm? that we can learn about the kingdom of God. This is a media, a social media that you're learning about the kingdom of God. As you're hearing it, share it with others. Be positive. Share positive things. Share about it. Jesus went about the place, all about the place, walking, doing good, sharing. Preaching about the gospel of the kingdom of God. He was preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Why are we not preaching it? As ministers, why are we not preaching it? Ministers of the gospel. Every believer is a minister. In the sense of, you know, we have a responsibility to tell others about this good news that we have heard. The gospel of the kingdom of God. We are without excuse. We are without excuse. We do not have any excuse for not sharing about the kingdom of God. My goodness, souls are perishing. How can we not be sharing and preaching? It's the same message that King Jesus preached, telling others how we are to be born again so that others are not deceived. No, in order for you to be in the kingdom, in order for you to experience eternal life, you must be born again. You must be born into the kingdom. It's not by <laughs> any accident, any association. It's nothing like that. It's simply by being born again. When Jesus preached on the kingdom of God, miracles happened. People got healed. People got delivered. The blind received sight. The deaf heard. The dead came back to life. Those who could not walk, who were lame, they were able to walk again. Things happened, my goodness. Things happened when Jesus preached on the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is within us. It is within us. We have no excuse why we are not preaching about this. Why am I not hearing about this message from the pulpits on Sundays, Saturdays? No, this is the message that King Jesus preached. We are to do likewise. I'm closing for today with this question. Could it be that we are not seeing these miracles because we are not preaching the same message that Jesus preached? Could it be that we're not seeing people delivered because we're not preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God? Could it be that we're not seeing people healed because we're not preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God? Could it be that we're not seeing the dead raised back to life because we're not preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God? Could it be that we're not seeing the blind receive their sight because we're not preaching on the gospel of the kingdom of God? Could it be that we're not seeing souls being added to the kingdom because we're not preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God? This has been the Teach Me to Obey radio broadcast. May we obey the commands of King Jesus. May we go and preach the gospel of the kingdom of God. Good evening. If you want to enter the kingdom, you have 
to be born again If you want to enter the kingdom You have to be born again, born again. Be born again Have to be born again Be born again Have to be born again A man named Nicodemus, yeah he visited Jesus He wanted to ask a question that was really serious He said, teacher, we know you're a man that sinned from God I know me visiting you right now might be odd Before he could ask his question Yeah, Jesus said, you must be born again In the very end Or you will never see the kingdom of God To Nicodemus, this word sounded very odd 